I've been asked to do a video about the day of internment, which was a, a very major event in the Northern Ireland Troubles, which actually escalated the trouble. Uh, why, why internment? You've got to look at the months prior to internment to understand the government's logic in doing this drastic action. The IRA had jumped on the bandwagon of the civil rights movement and uh, equality and everything else. They wanted a united Ireland. The other Catholics just wanted uh, civil rights and democracy. <clears throat> but they soon got well organized. They were organizing in battalion formation. Uh, intelligence corps were monitoring their telephones. Uh, informers were giving information of who was the battalion commanders and everything. So all around uh, Northern Ireland at that time, the IRA were getting recruits and starting the, it was a civil war. There's no other way to describe it. In Ballymurphy alone, there was many, many incidents. I'll just name a few of them. Uh, for instance, this was thrown at me. Uh, i trying to show you. It's, this is a five inch nail bomb. The one that threw me was a six inch nail bomb. Packed with explosive in the middle. I've just put a candle in to show you what it was, what it looked like. They had a, a detonator and fuse, a three seconds fuse. And the, the soldier that threw it at me, and I call him a soldier because he was a brave boy. He threw this thing as I was going down, uh, what was the name? Bally Murphy Drive. A good sign when you're going to have trouble is there's nobody on the street. It was a, a night time. All the lights were disconnected. One, one street light was working. And I had to cross the road first. Then all of a sudden, whop, this landed one foot, one meter, sorry, in front of me. As a short ass paratrooper, one meter was too far to kick it out of harm's way. All I could do was shout, Grenade! and warn my comrades. I was a dead guy. Was, you know, I knew I was going to die. As simple as that. It was, it felt like being punched with a massive big glove. And it lifted me up in the air and threw me back over. And I landed three meters back from where this thing had landed. And the first thing you do, is check your balls and everything that you've still got your tackle in place and then the, the rest is not that important like you know you, you can manage without a leg and something but i'm checking myself quickly and i felt okay i had uh, a blast into my lungs so my chest was a bit sore but i stood up and as i stood up the ira soldier that threw it looked at me in amazement how oh, the fuck am I not? He's not dead. And I was saying the same. How did I survive? That was a miracle. As simple as that. It was a miracle. How not one of them nails touched me. It was a miracle. So I looked at him. He looked at me about 12 yards apart. So I, got, I had an SLR rifle. I was a non-combatant really. But I had a rifle to protect myself. So I cocked the weapon and I was going to shoot him. And when I cocked my weapon, he started running. And he ran into the gardens. Corporal Salt, who was a patrol commander, fired a couple of rounds after him. And another soldier fired after him. So he got a fright as well, like, you know, the bullets whizzing after him. But I call him a soldier. He was a brave boy. That was one incident. Another incident was uh, when Frank Salt was out. No, I wasn't there this time. An IRA soldier, I call him a soldier again, jumped out in front of him. He had a Thompson machine gun and he pressed the trigger, clonk, and it didn't work. He tried to press it again. Uh, this time, Frank got his uh, rubber bullet gun, that's all he had on him, and fired the rubber bullet at him, a seven inch black bullet, and missed him. 
because they were both in shock. The IRA for his rifle not working, and uh, Frank, the fright of his bloody life, that he was still alive. So the IRA started running, and Frank came back and reported the incident. Another incident. Uh, two Land Rovers that were going down White Rock Road where the cemetery was. Nice straight road. And the lads had actually got out the Land Rover. The Land Rover would go one mile an hour on its own. And they were standing at the side of the Land Rover. And two IRA men had an improvised explosive device and they detonated it. As it detonated, it fell forward and most of the shrapnel went into the garden. So nobody was injured. Uh, the corporal was Yorky Hill. Yorky Hill shot at the two IRA bombers that were running and managed to shoot one in the ass. So they got him and they went into the house and retrieved the other one. Both of them were wearing double clothing, they had two pairs of jeans on and lots of warm clothing as they'd been lying in wait for a patrol to come down the road. Mistreated he was a bit, I must admit. Uh, I give a demonstration. I checked his uh, pulse and his blood pressure. Perfect. He wasn't bleeding. Didn't have any internal bleeding. It was uh, amazing to me. But uh, I took the uh, incident to show every soldier what a gunshot wound looks like. Because he had, it looked like he had two arseholes, uh, the, the way the bullet had gone in. It had ricocheted around his pelvis and landed. And it didn't come out of his skin, but it was just on his skin, on his thigh. Padre Weston gave him the last rites, so he was a bit frightened he was going to die, but I knew he wasn't. So I used it as a medical lecture for the other lads to show gunshot wounds. Oh, we'd have seen many gunshot wounds in the near future, but that was the first one we see. Uh, so these incidents were going on all over Northern Ireland. We had a civil war, an undeclared by the government civil war. But us soldiers, every time we went out on patrol, we we could uh, end up getting killed. We had armoured vehicles, but they cost a lot of money to run. You only go about two miles to the gallon with an armoured vehicle. So they made us drive around in open Land Rovers. So we're an easy target for the IRA terrorists. Well, at the time, I'm not calling them terrorists. 